go on my laptop. Hi. I was going to go on my laptop to um, use as my phone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hi, because I lost. Yvonne, my screen froze up. So, um, I don't know if they're ready for me yet or not. So, I'm going to wait. Wait a couple of minutes and see see what goes on. Oh, I'll try to find her again. Can't tell by my shirt, but I am with the Double Trouble group. Today we are having. She's not there. Uh, teachers appreciate. So I'm gonna get out until the next couple of minutes when it goes to me, and I'll be pulling me up. So I can see me. Oh, and I'm not here. Here I am. Sometimes I'm here and sometimes I'm not. So, let me get that set up. I've got some notes here that I want to read. So, and I've got you all patty corner, so I'm going to scoot you just a little bit. So... Welcome, welcome, welcome to Teacher Appreciation Day, hosted by Miss Siobhan Beamer, the Crafting Dammy, and uh, we're with the Devil Trouble Group. Now, you wouldn't know that because my t-shirt is probably reading backwards to you. The, um, the phone won't turn, so... I'm going to start checking comments here real quick because I lost Javon. So, hey, Marsha. Hello, Miss Connie. Hey, Krista. So, while everybody's coming on, I'll get another drink of coffee to stay awake. I forgot to set my timer. I've gone an hour. So, let's go say 58 minutes. So, I'm going to hold it down here. And y'all ignore the horrible noise that it makes while I put this on. Okay. Now, as I said, welcome, welcome, welcome to Yvonne Beamer's. Uh, teacher Appreciation, Yvonne is over at the Devil Trouble Group, and um, I think it's wonderful that the events that this group does usually are to make awareness of something or to, to honor a group of people, and uh, today it's Teacher's Appreciation Day, and I've talked to several Several different uh, levels of education yesterday and today. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do, of course, you know, every teacher's got to have an apple. Now, I'm going to leave the hole in my little wooden apple because I'm going to string the, uh, I'm going to string it on to a board. And then, I'm going to build a basket. So, I'm going to tell you my experience and with teachers that I had. I had, um, Krista Robin, can somebody else Watch just to make sure. There's Yvonne. I lost you at the very end. You froze up. So, 
Oh, oh, my sweet sisters are on here. I graduated. Okay, I'll tell you how old I am. I graduated in 1978 from LaRue County High School. Now, that was a rare year. That was the year that we had a blizzard. I don't remember if it was December the 28th or but later in the year. No, it wasn't later in the year. We were off for Christmas break, so. Um, anyway. So, we were out of school. The blizzard was so bad, we had road drifts. I mean, 12, 14 foot high. And, uh, and now that's a good guesstimate of what I remember. I just remember I grew up on a farm. And my dad, it just constantly pulling people out of the snow drifts as they were trying to get home from work, trying to get home from wherever or whatever they had been to. And and daddy was daddy was busy doing that because you know the state at that time didn't even have equipment that they could get in there to get, uh-oh, it's got a boogie. Y'all know how I feel about the paint boogies. And so we ended up not graduating until June of that year. Now, we went to school. We were supposed to get out. We were 8 o'clock to 3 o'clock. We were supposed to get out. Three o'clock. Well, since we missed a month of school, the state and the school board decided we'd go till four o'clock in the afternoon. We didn't like it. The teachers didn't like it. Um, it was it was hard on everybody. But I'm going to talk to you about two of my favorite. A lot of people can remember all of their elementary school teachers and and all of that. Now, I don't, I don't recall all of their names. I remember Miss Sarah Sterling being my first grade teacher. And I know y'all won't believe this, but I got a spanking the first day of school. The angel that I am. So, Miss Sarah Sterling told us very plainly not to write on the blackboard. Well, <laughs> two other girls, uh, one of which has gone on, and um, another girl was like, well, I can write my name, and I can write my name, and I'm like, well, I can write my name. So the three of us go to the blackboard and proceed to start writing our names. This is not a good way to start school off. But she was the sweetest woman that ever walked on the, the face of the earth. And I said I got a spanking. I got a couple of little taps on the leg. But I knew not to disobey Miss Sarah again. And, uh, so she, I guess, as far as elementary school, she was, uh, she was probably my favorite teacher. And then, I know, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm putting stuff over. So I want this to be shiny. Now I still got to paint the green on it, but I have uh, uh, a gloss varnish. Here it is. Get this 
all painted here, and I've still been out this morning shopping for this event because I know the person I'm giving it to personally, so I want to I want it to really be nice for them. So we need green. Oh boy, if this doesn't look like apple green, I don't know what does. That other one's kind of mini looking. But, um, I'll tell you about my teachers, and then I'll tell you what I learned from talking to other teachers and administrators. Now, uh, middle school, we had Miss Goodman as the librarian. And she... She was a wonderful, wonderful teacher. And even though she was the librarian, she was still a teacher to us. So, in high school, I had several favorite teachers. I know, and that's, that's odd because most people don't, don't in high school. And I talked a little bit about it the other night. Um, oh, I laid that down on my my notes. The, um, and God rest their souls, they're both gone now. Um, Miss Bessie Miller, I had her for English. And I loved her to death. And she took over the library that year, or the next year or two. And I went out and helped her get the library set up. So we became more friends then than we did teacher, student. And there was never a time that failed that we saw each other out that we didn't give each other a hug or talk to each other. She was just, she was just one of those good memory teachers. Also, Helen Hubbard, when I was a senior, I had her for government. I don't even know what, gov it, what they call government anymore. Things have changed a lot since 1978. Y'all forgive me with the coffee. I, uh, anyway. <sighs> okay. She was a, she was a hot mess. Now, y'all think some of us are a hot mess. She was a hot mess. And she was, uh, I couldn't tell you at the time how old she was, but she was, she was probably retired, maybe a few years later, but I almost believe I could have committed Harry Carey in that class, and she wouldn't have said a word to me, so I walk in that first day, and go get a seat, and she's going by asking everybody, their names, you know, stuff like that. And this is just a gloss varnish that I'm putting on here. Um, and she gets to me and she says, you don't have to tell me who you are. And she said, you're little Donnie Shadow. And I said, well... <clears throat> yes, ma'am, but um, I'm Connie Shadow, and Donnie's my older brother. She said, I know who you are. I know who he was. She said, he was my favorite. And I don't believe that whole year that she called me by my given name. It was always little Donnie. 
Little Donnie, run do this. Little Donnie, run do that. So, but she was sweet, but you learned, you learned so much from her. But not only did we go to school until four o'clock during the day, we also went Saturdays. Now, I didn't go a lot of Saturdays. <laughs> I went, I went. Miss Hubbard was my, my homeroom teacher and we'd walk in and she'd be sitting there reading a magazine or something and she'd say, okay, take out your notebooks. Write your name and the date on the top of the paper. And that's what we did. And that's all we did. Now, I was, uh, I was engaged at the time. And, uh, so my boyfriend was writing me, my fiance was writing me notes to turn in that I was needed at home or something, whatever the, the reason was. You know, that we decided to make up that day. But, uh, anyway, so I didn't go very many Saturdays. And the teachers didn't really teach on those Saturdays. And I don't blame them. They had done looked at us from 8 o'clock to 4 o'clock every day that week. I'm going to lay this aside to dry. I don't think that they did anything wrong by doing that because they were merely exhausted too. Now, I don't know what in the world will happen now. Well, I do too because we had COVID and uh, we had... Uh, a granddaughter and a grandson that uh, were in school during the time of COVID, and they uh, it was a struggle. It was a struggle for them. It was a struggle for the teachers, and it was a struggle for the parents and for us. Um. At one point, I thought I wasn't going to pass fourth grade math trying to help my granddaughter with math. Because I don't care how you get it. <clears throat> if you count cows, you count your toes. Two plus two is four. And how... It's okay. How you get to four, it shouldn't matter. But... Any of you who have children in school nowadays, you know that you have to, it, it, it's got to be drawn out on a graph. It's got to be written out how you got to that particular thing. Um, you know, it's, it's a big deal now how you do it. But, uh, when I was in school, no, and, and we, and we learned our multiplication tables. And are adding, like, you know, always was taught. You know, it was more a memorization thing than it was that. Uh, I loved English. I loved history. No, I won't go there. I loved government, and those, those were my favorite. And, of course, part of the English, I'm looking for my basket. Part of the English was reading, and I loved to read, so that didn't matter. I know I brought it in here. 
Okay. We'll do this first. Let me find some letters here. I don't know if there'll be enough on this one or not. But like I said, I know I know who I'm giving this gift basket to. So y'all forgive me. I'm gonna put his name on here. Ooh, these letters may be too big. I just want to use this board because I could line them up. And I like bare wood, so I wasn't even going to paint it. It's got kind of a, a dry wash look to it. But now I don't know if it's going to work or not. Now, when I talk to uh, to the teachers today, which I admire anyone who goes in to teaching today, you know they don't do it for the money. You get the summer off. That's a plus. That, that would have been the reason I would have went into it. Is you get the summer off. But. I don't think. I could deal. With. Some of the problems. Discipline problems. That they have. And that they deal with. I just, I don't believe I could do it at all. And I still can't get this to lay down here the way I want it to. But anyway. So, I talked to, and it was really odd. And maybe coincidental. I don't know. But all three... Of the teachers, I talked to a past, a present, and a future teacher. And I asked them, I said, well, at what point in time in your life did you think that you, you wanted to become a teacher? And they all said, third grade. Now... I thought that was coincidental, but they all knew by third grade that they wanted to be teachers. I talked to an administrator, and uh, he's in a sense assistant principal, and uh, he knew after a couple of days of substitute teaching, which I don't know how you do that without being a teacher teacher to start off with. But anyway, he knew immediately substitute teaching that he wanted to become a teacher. He, um, he's, um, now, an assistant principal, he, he just enjoyed the interaction with the kids. But the, I'm, I don't, I'm not sure what grade he taught. I forgot to ask him that. But um, he enjoyed the interaction with them and, and helping draw out their creativity coffee cups in the way I see and but if he could change one thing 
And I only asked him, you know, could you if you could change one thing, what would it be? And he said, hey, T, how are you? And Molly Molly's here. Um, we all did, I'm missing everybody. So, they, um, the one thing, the one thing, and this guy surprised me. The one thing he wanted to change, he wanted to be in the classroom more. He said, instead of being in an office, crossing the T's and dotting the I's and all that, that he'd like to be in the classrooms, you know, be able to go visit the classrooms while class is going on and, and spend time with the, with the kids. So I thought that. That was that was pretty amazing because the one answer I asked everybody the same thing. The one answer I was expecting, I guess I was hoping that they would all say is, I saw a broken system, and I wanted to fix it. I wanted to be a part of fixing it, but nobody said that. But if I were going to be a teacher, I would, I would see, or as an outsider, of course, my children have graduated and gone on to, to other jobs. I still have grandchildren in the schools here. I'd like to see them fix where the broken things are. And I don't know if they can do a lot of that. Now, my son, probably shouldn't tell this, works for KEA. He works in Frankfurt, at the capital for KEA. And there have been some changes come about lately that uh, have made it really hard and going to make it harder for the teachers than it already is. But for, for just a second, I want you to put yourself in the place of being a teacher and walking into a school that first day. Okay. So we all know the first thing they're going to do is they're going to try you. Because that's what we did to our teachers. We tried them. Oh, please tell me I'm going to have enough letters. But that that's the first thing you're going to run into is them trying your... See what they can get by with. See how much you're going to take from them. And then after that, then you're going to have to decide if you haven't already been in... 14 staff meetings telling you how to discipline these children. Now, in comes where and why I could not be a teacher. Because I couldn't take a child trash talking me. I couldn't take a child bullying and picking on another child. Every school 
and I, now I'm just saying here in Larue County, I don't know about anywhere else, every school here says that they have a strict bullying process. Well, now, my response to that is bull. Because they can't be everywhere all the time. Whether it's a first grade class or it's a senior class. And then when they are told about it, I'm not so sure that it's taken care of properly. Supposedly you get suspension. But sometimes the wrong child gets the suspension. Sometimes, if that child has been bullied long enough, and they have gotten to the point that they've had enough, you know, they crack. Just like you and I would crack. In an office situation. And this is, I'm, this is all Connie. This isn't, I did have enough letters. This is all Connie. This isn't anybody else, you know, saying it. I would start the first day of kindergarten. Preschool, I guess, well, we have preschool. So, I guess the first day of preschool. Ooh, I didn't leave myself in the room for this last letter. It's going to overlap a little bit. That's okay. I can fix it later. But, I would, I would start in preschool the first day, two hours a day. Teaching what most kids are not getting taught at home now. Now that's not saying that's not saying there's bad parents out there. Yeah, there are bad parents out there. We, I mean, that's that's life. We know that. But there are some great parents out there too, and there are some great parents that care if their child is doing well in school. There are some great parents. That the minute they get home from from work, they say, "Okay, is your homework done?" Oh well, get it and get it done. Then you can go do whatever it is you're wanting to do. And they would be taught, "Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am." They would be taught, "Please and thank you." And I better see what you all are saying because I, I may be stepping on somebody's toes and I do not mean to. Did I see Minnie? There's Miss Minnie and Marlene. How are you ladies today? I'm preaching. They're, I guess Deb Cruz will be calling me Reverend again. Uh, anyway... I don't think most children are getting that taught at home. I don't know that, but from what I've seen on times that I have went to school, uh, there were still, till COVID, times when we could go in and volunteer and help. Um, we could go in and help with with the parties and and things like that. Of course, my grandchildren are getting older now. So, this was this was all pre-COVID. It turned out kind of shiny. Not not real shiny. I may have to, to give it another coat. But, uh, and he, 
he's probably, he probably won't watch this, but if he does, then it's for Aaron Harp. And when I was talking to him on the phone yesterday, he graduates Friday uh, as a teacher and starting his master's. Um, Aaron is not a uh, fresh out of high school young man. Aaron has a family and a wife. In the past few years, in order to go to school and get his education, he's he's a magician. And he's done magical shows. So, and, and his wife has worked and supports him. Um, I met Aaron through church. If that basket had been sitting any closer to me, I really wouldn't have seen it. I put 4th of July, uh, Memorial Day tool inside of it. And I'm like, where's that empty basket I had? But anyway, I'm going to fix Aaron a basket of things that I think teachers would like. And one teacher shared with me. And I told all of them, I'm not mentioning names. And I'm not. That's not fair to them or anybody else. Anyway, this is just a little tub. And it's a dry erase tub. So, if somebody needs a tub or, or Mr. Hart needs a tub, he's got one now. Um... One teacher told me she loved teaching. She was teaching in the third grade. And she loved teaching reading. And what a reward. And and what love she, she got and found out of letting those kids, they, they all wanted to read to her. That That's how... Years ago, now, that, now I know her, and, and she's not going to be offended. She's just a little bit older than me. But years ago, you know, we would read to our teachers so that they knew we could read. Um, we went to blackboards and wrote out problems so they know they knew we knew the math. Uh, nowadays, it's all electronic. But the joy, and you, and I could hear it in her voice, the joy that she got when those children read to her was love. It was love. She loved each and every one of her students. And, and when they would read to her, you know, she, she said it would just fill her heart. So, so you you know she was one of those that that needed to be a teacher, and we have some that I would question, but but not the ones that that I talked to. And uh, one of the other ones brought to mind something that we all think about, need to think about, you know. These kids are going to be leading our country one day. Now, if you can't go through school respecting your teacher or your classmate, how are you going to go out in the world and take hold and go on and make this a better place to be? You know, it, it, the song, I forgot who sang it, you know, they are all going to go out and do something. And I won't 
Say which one told me because I didn't ask if it was okay if I told it. But uh, one of them told me that they just wanted to make an M. I'm just getting my sights up, guys. They they just wanted to make an impact in a child's life. That they had a teacher make an impact in their life. And, and pretty much kind of turn them around. Yes, up next after me is Yvonne. Miss Yvonne Beamer. And she's the one hosting today. And she's, uh, she's the one over the Devil Trouble Group. Which I, I don't classify them as Devil Trouble. I classify them as... Devil giggles and and laughter. They are uh, it. They're really a great, great group of women. And I do hope that you can stick around today because I'm sure they're going to do lots of things. Now, I'm not that creative when it comes to to all this, but I just picked up a few things that I thought a teacher might need. So, you know, they're going to need index cards. Well, I don't know. I'm picking up what I thought because I don't, I don't know. Because who does know? Pack of ink pants. I got two things of, uh, Notes, notepads. This one says good vibes. And I hope and pray that they all go in to the classroom the rest of this year and start next year with good vibes. And this one made me think of him too. It says slay the day. And... There's, there's not doubt in my mind that Mr. Hart will do that. But I was telling you about the other teacher that I talked to. Um, they wanted to become a teacher because they knew when they were young that that they were they were in a in a bad situation. They knew that. They were going to probably end up down the wrong road until they met that one particular teacher. And remember, I told you, they all said that they knew by the time they were in third grade. So, how you know all this when you're in third grade? And... <laughs> Lots of pencils, because I had one teacher tell me, um, she was uh, actually a Sunday school teacher of mine. It never failed. Somebody would come in every day, and they wouldn't have their pencils. I'm going to start stacking these in the back instead of the front. So we got the pencils. We got notepads. We got ink pens. We got ruler cards. I don't even remember what I used them for in school, but we got, we got them. We've got some more sticky notes. We've got some coloring pencils. See, I prepared him. You're gonna get, he, he's gonna have lots of pencils in case the kids come without pencils. A package of erasers. Now, you know, it's it's a hard, hard day and a hard job being a teacher. I respect them for that. 90% of them, I respect for that. There are a few, no, but, but most of them. So... I don't know what his favorite candy is, but now his favorite candy is going to be Junior Mints. My basket's 
spoon up. And you know he's gonna need chocolate Hershey kisses to get him through the day. He's gonna have to have a chocolate break sometime during the day. He's gonna need popcorn. I'm looking at my timer. He's gonna need popcorn, you know, to get through all of this. And one of them I kind of selfishly got for him. Well, we'll do these, these last two things last. I wanna know what some of you all think. I want you all to tell me what your school life was like. Now, my daddy and most of y'all's, I would say y'all's grandpas or, or great-grandpas would have said uh, this. Now, my daddy had to walk uphill to and from school. Yeah, and it didn't matter what kind of weather it was, but it was always uphill. It was uphill to the school, and then it was uphill to, to home. So, he, he'd he lay some crazy stories on us. But truly, cursive writing, yes, yes, and I'm glad you brought that up, and I got it wrote down and went right over top of it. Now, no one, Kylie, I, oh, oh, they just despised me a few years ago. They know how to write their names in cursive, and they know how to do, read a few words in cursive, because it got to where it was so difficult, it was, it was hard. You know, how are they going to sign loan payment papers? How are they going to sign their names? Well, I had to fill out insurance papers the other day. And I just typed my name in. And I guess that's legally binding. But uh, nobody saw me type my name in. Nobody saw me answering the questions. Uh, so, yeah, yay, great. They can type type their names and stuff, but no, I think the cursive writing is, is a very big thing. So, okay, let's see. They aren't teaching reading and writing these days. The kids don't know how to do it. No. No. And things started changing when my son Michael was in probably the second or third grade with spelling. Because I say, okay, give me your list and let's go over your spelling words. Okay. They were teaching them to spell, not the way the word was spelled. The correct, but they were teaching phonetics. So, as long as he phonetically got that word gotten across, you know, okay, it was all right. So, okay, it was all right. Um, we were going to get your all's comments. Robin, do you have the timer? I set my timer. I should have 12 minutes, I think. I think we're doing an hour. Or are we doing 45 minutes? Somebody tell me. Hour or 45 minutes? I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Homeschooling is good work. It's, it's good. The parents who can do it. And it's a shame I have to sit here 
and trust this technology to remind me. So I think I had an I think I've got an hour. I think I've still got like eleven minutes. So if it's not and it's only 45, then I've done went into Yvonne's time, and I do not want to do that. So, somebody tell me, and I'll put my last couple of gifts in. Y'all are messing with me now, aren't you? <laughs> I'm just out here talking to myself, and there's nobody else there. <laughs> I believe Yvonne comes on at three. I'm sticking with that. I saw the schedule. I'm, I believe. And y'all watch Miss Yvonne. She's, she's such a delightful person. And you can, oh my goodness, I ain't even gonna tell you. But you can cut up and kid with Yvonne and, and her go right along with it. She has such a good sense of humor. But, Anyway, I want to put another coat of varnish on this apple because it's not, it's not shining bright enough for me. But, Erin, I hope you get used to being called Mr. Hart. I hope you enjoy, I'm, I'll lay it there, but I'm going to take it back out. You can hang that in your classroom somewhere or something. You got all these goodies, but you still needed something else. Now, when you're eating your chocolate kisses, you need a cup. You need an insulated cup, a stainless steel cup. And you probably need to drink a cup of coffee in it on your way to work. I don't know if you drink coffee or not, but... And... I didn't buy you hot chocolate mix because since we know each other and I hope and pray you trust me that uh, that you'll uh, you'll you'll trust to use my hot chocolate mix I make up every year and I got you this cup I, like he's watching and he probably won't even see this <laughs> It says, prayer changes everything. I truly, truly believe prayer changes everything. I'm not going to get into politics of bringing prayer back into school. I just think we need to have a prayer every day. For our students and our teachers. We need to have a prayer forum. To have a wonderful school year. And every morning to have a wonderful day. We need to pray for them to be safe. We need to pray for God to put his protective covering over these schools and let no harm come into them. Whether they're a preschool, whether they're a high school, whether they're a college, whether they're a, a, a private school. We need to pray for God's protection and covering of his blood over these schools. Because you think every day these teachers get up, go to school, administrators. And who knows? There's so much of it anymore. Who knows when, when something might happen. Yeah, we live in a little bitty town. But that doesn't mean we're safe. We've got the same things going on now in the little bitty towns like we had, like some of you have 
in the big suits. So, I, I, that's just, oh, Lord, at the comments I have missed. I have knocked it over trying to bring them up. I guess that's why nobody was telling me a while ago how much time I had left. Hi, Lisa. How are you? I've been missing y'all. I've been missing the morning show of the mornings, and I've missed everybody. <laughs> but uh, back again on a serious note, if you believe in the power of prayer, you know, that wouldn't be a bad thing on your way to work. You don't have to be sitting somewhere or sitting in a church and have your head bowed and your hands clasped or on your knees for God to hear your prayers. When you're driving to work, when you're driving to drop your child off for school, pray for them. Pray for them. Pray for the teachers. Pray, you know, nothing happens nowhere in the world at any school to any child. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm off my soapbox now. What y'all want to talk about? Hey, Vicky. Let's see. We used to pray before school every day. We did too. And we had the um, Pledge of Allegiance. If you chose not to pray or you chose not to do the Pledge of Allegiance, that was fine. That was fine. I don't remember anybody not doing it back in the day. But one reason I don't want to see maybe that change is because there are so many different beliefs out there. And you're going to have somebody, and, it, and it'll be an adult, come in and say, well... If y'all were going to pray to your God, then then my child has the right to pray to their God. We didn't pray out loud. We said a silent prayer. We had a minute for silent prayer. You could have prayed to the God of fish if you'd have wanted to. The Pledge of Allegiance we did do. And I'm sorry if you're in this country... I believe you should do the Pledge of Allegiance. Now, I may have lost a lot of people. That's just how I feel. Yeah, and again, I'm, I'm not telling y'all how to feel. I'm telling you how I feel. And then on the other side of the cup is my in my verse. It's my favorite verse. It's, it's a verse I try to live by and fail miserably at. Pray without ceasing, 1 Thessalonians 5.17. And I try to remember, and I don't remember until after I've got upset. And after I, boy, you know, I done plotted out my plan or whatever, you know. And then, then God says, hey, hey, wait a minute, you know. Pray about it. Just pray about it. Don't do anything. Just pray about it. So, anyway, I've run out of room. <laughs> okay, well, maybe I'll eat the junior mints and make room for the mug or something, you know. But anyway, I, I do hate that our teachers go through so much in a day's time. You know, listening, putting up with stuff that if we'd have done, our teachers had rulers, our teachers had paddles, our teachers had yardsticks. I'm not saying be brutal. I'm not saying beat these children. Oh my gosh. No, don't. But you'll have that one instance in five years once in five years, maybe, that one teacher 
will go overboard. And that's where your problem starts. So, that that's, that's what messes my thing up. Like I said, I admire them. I pray for them. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. So, up next, you all be sure and jump over to Miss Yvonne's page, The Crafting Gammy. She's a wonderful host. Oh, she's a wonderful hostess, excuse me. And you probably saw her on here earlier when she was doing her, uh, the lineup and everything. And I truly do hope that you've enjoyed today. And uh, if you see the red live button above my head, that means I'm live. If not, that means you're watching replay. And you'll go in the comments and hit hashtag replay. If you like me, if you like my little craft, anything I've done or said, if you push on the other side, you can follow. And Facebook, Facebook likes for us to get followers. That helps them. Uh, be sure and throw up lots of hearts and likes and follows Ooh, for all of the other crafters today. I'm done. I'm getting off here. I love you. God loves you. And go see Miss Siobhan. She's on now. If she's not, she will be in just a second. So I'm going to clear this thing out because I don't want it to go off again. Bye, guys.